Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Manisha Shivari. If you are new to my channel or haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. This is the first video of the series Molecular Orbital Theory. In this video, we will begin with the introduction. Then we will discuss about the assumptions and drawbacks of valence bond theory. We will then move on to the assumptions of molecular orbital theory. We will study the linear combination of atomic orbitals, that is the LCAO principle. Finally, we will see how to draw the MO energy level diagram. When two or more atoms combine to form molecules, energy is liberated. Now this is because there is a force of attraction which holds these constituent atoms or ions together. And this attractive force is called as the chemical bond. And the molecules which are formed have a lower energy than that of the combining atoms. And whenever there is a lowering in the energy, this indicates stability. And the formation of the chemical bonds is explained by different theories. They are the Cossel-Lewis approach the valence shell electron pair repulsion, that is the VSEPR theory. The next two theories, the valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory, are based on quantum mechanics. First, we will discuss about the valence bond theory, which is abbreviated as VBT. This theory was proposed by Hitler and London in 1927 and was further extended by Linus Pauling and John Slatter in 1931 and for his extensive research into the nature of chemical bond, Linus Pauling received the Nobel Prize in 1954. The valence bond theory is based on the following assumptions. The bond formed between two atoms is a covalent bond. It is formed by the overlapping of atomic orbitals where each atomic orbital contains an unpaired electron. Now this overlap can be of two types. One where there is a linear or axial overlap which results in the formation of a sigma bond. The other where there is a lateral or sideways overlap and this results in the formation of a pi bond which is weaker than the sigma bond. Now when the atomic orbital is combined, the extent of overlap determines the strength of the bond. So greater the overlap, stronger will be the bond. And the electron pair during the bond formation is localized between the two bonded atoms. And after the molecule is formed, the atoms still maintain their individuality. The geometry of the molecules can be explained by VBT on the basis of hybridization of atomic orbitals. VBT can explain the bonding in many molecules, but it also has few limitations or drawbacks. VBT explains the formation of a covalent bond between two atoms by the sharing of electrons. So it cannot explain the coordinate bond formation where one of the two bonded atoms donates the electron pair and the other atom accepts it. The theory cannot explain the formation of molecular ions like H2+, He2+, and so on. According to valence bond theory, when the oxygen molecule is formed, there is pairing of electrons and due to the absence of unpaired electrons, oxygen molecule will be diamagnetic. But experimentally it is observed that oxygen molecule is paramagnetic with two unpaired electrons. This paramagnetism of oxygen cannot be explained by VBT. The theory also fails in explaining the bonding in electron deficient compounds and in case of metals and intermetallic compounds. It cannot explain the magnetic and spectral properties. So to overcome these limitations, we have the next theory which is the molecular orbital theory. The molecular orbital theory, abbreviated as MOT, was proposed by Frederick Hunt and Robert Mulliken in 1932. And for this, Robert Mulliken received the Nobel Prize in 1966. Now this theory is based on the following assumptions. A molecule is made up of atoms. And when the molecule is formed, the atomic orbitals of the individual atoms combine to form molecular orbitals. The atomic orbitals which combine have comparable energy and proper symmetry. By comparable energy we mean that 1s atomic orbital of one hydrogen can combine with the 1s atomic orbital of the other hydrogen 
while forming the H2 molecule. But in case of HCl molecule, 1s of the hydrogen combines with 3px of chlorine and not with the 1s. When we discuss about the proper symmetry, then the orbitals which can combine are the s and px or px px or we can have the combination like ss. But in case of the combinations like spy or px py, they are not allowed. Now the number of the molecular orbitals formed is equal to the number of atomic orbitals combining. When the molecule is formed, the atoms lose their individual character. As the atomic orbital contains a single nucleus, it is said to be monocentric, whereas the molecular orbital, as it contains two or more nuclei, it is polycentric. In case of the molecule, the electrons are more deep localized as compared to that in the isolated atoms. The atomic orbitals are represented as wave functions, while in case of molecular orbitals, the wave functions are represented as the linear combination of the wave functions of atomic orbitals. We will understand the differences between atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals. An atomic orbital represents the area in an atom where there is maximum probability of finding electron, while in case of molecular orbital, this represents the area in a molecule where we have maximum probability of finding the electron. An atomic orbital is monocentric as it contains a single nucleus, while a molecular orbital is polycentric as it contains two or more nuclei. Atomic orbitals are represented as S, P, D, F and so on. The molecular orbitals are represented as sigma, sigma star, pi, pi star, etc. Atomic orbital is derived from a particular atom while a molecular orbital is derived from the constituent atoms. Then in case of atoms, uh, the nucleus is fixed in space. While for molecules, the nuclei of the constituent atoms are fixed in space at their relative positions. Then atomic orbitals have definite shape, size and energy. And in case of molecular orbital, these depend on the atomic orbitals which have combined. We will understand the formation of molecular orbitals by the linear combination of atomic orbitals that is the LCAO principle. Now consider two atoms A and B which combine to form the molecule AB. Now when the two atoms approach each other, then at bonding distance, the electron clouds of the two atoms overlap and merge to form the molecular orbitals. According to wave mechanics, Atomic orbitals are described in terms of wave function. So in case of A and B, the atomic orbitals are represented by the wave functions phi1 and phi2. Psi denotes the wave function for the molecular orbital of AB. Now psi can be obtained from the linear combination of atomic orbitals by addition or subtraction of phi1 and phi2. So psi can be expressed as phi1 plus or minus lambda phi2, where lambda is the mixing coefficient. It is a measure of the ionic character of the bond between A and B. In case of homonuclear diatomic molecules, that is the molecules containing two atoms of the same element, here lambda is equal to 1. So psi can be written as phi1 plus phi2 or phi1 minus phi2. The formation of molecular orbitals by LCAO principle can be explained using the concept of interference of waves. So let's consider the formation of hydrogen molecule from two hydrogen atoms. The wave functions for the 1s atomic orbitals of the two hydrogens are represented as phi1 and phi2. Now the wave functions can combine in two ways. One, where the wave functions approach such that there is overlap of the same signs. In the other case, the different signs plus and minus come together. Now remember that these signs should not be confused with the charges positive and negative. This is the wave function phi1 and this is phi2. So we, we will look at the first way of the combination where phi1 and phi2 overlap 
such that the plus plus signs come together. So there is said to be addition of the wave functions and psi is represented as phi1 plus phi2. There is said to be constructive interference and the waves are in phase. The other possibility is where we have phi1 and phi2 which combine such that the plus and minus signs come together. There is said to be a subtraction of these wave functions and psi is represented as phi1 minus phi2. So this is a destructive interference where the waves are out of phase. We will first understand the constructive interference and then we will discuss about the destructive interference. So here is the wave function phi1 for the first hydrogen atom and this is phi2. When the two wave functions come together, the resulting wave function will be of a greater magnitude. So psi is represented as phi1 plus phi2. The electron density between the two hydrogen atoms is more concentrated in case of the molecular orbital. And due to this concentration of electron density, the repulsion between the nuclei is less. And the molecular orbital which is formed has an energy which is lower than that of the atomic orbitals. The molecular orbital, as it has a lower energy, is more stable. Now such molecular orbital, which is formed by the addition of the wave functions, is called as the bonding molecular orbital, which is denoted as psi b or psi. In case of destructive interference, the two wave functions, phi1 and phi2, these combine such that the opposite signs come together and the resulting wave function psi is represented as phi1 minus phi2. Now if we look at the uh, central region between the two nuclei, there is no electron density and this point is called as the node and the plane which passes through the node is called as the nodal plane. Now as there is no electron density between the two nuclei, the repulsion between the nuclei will increase and the molecular orbital form will have energy which is greater than that of the atomic orbitals and this molecular orbital will be less stable. Such molecular orbital which is formed by the subtraction of the wave functions is called as the antibonding molecular orbital ABMO and is denoted by psi A or psi star. The probability of finding the electron density in individual atoms is represented as phi1 square and phi2 square, while in case of the molecule it is represented as psi square. For the bonding molecular orbitals, psi is equal to phi1 plus phi2. So psi square will be phi1 plus phi2 whole square, which is equal to phi1 square plus phi2 square plus twice phi1 phi2. So from this expression, we understand that psi square is greater than phi1 square plus phi2 square by twice phi1 phi2. So this explains the increased electron density between the nuclei. For the antibonding molecular orbitals, psi a is equal to phi1 minus phi2. So psi a square is equal to phi1 minus phi2 whole square, which is phi1 square plus phi2 square minus twice phi1 phi2. This expression indicates that psi square is less than phi1 square plus phi2 square by twice phi1 phi2. So we can explain that the electron density between the nuclei has decreased. We have understood the formation of the bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals. So now we can distinguish between them. The wave function of a bonding molecular orbital is given as psi is equal to phi1 plus phi2. Whereas in case of the antibonding molecular orbital, there is a subtraction of the wave functions. So psi star is written as phi1 minus phi2. When the lobes of the atomic orbitals having same signs overlap, then this results in the formation of a bonding molecular orbital. And when the lobes have opposite signs, we get the antibonding molecular orbital. The bonding molecular orbital has a lower energy than that of the atomic orbitals, while the antibonding molecular orbitals have higher energy. 
in the region between the nuclei of the bonded atoms there is an increased electron density in case of the bonding molecular orbital while for antibonding molecular orbitals the electron density is low now when the electrons are filled in the molecular orbitals each electron in the bonding molecular orbital will contributes towards the attraction between the atoms while every electron in the antibonding molecular orbital contributes towards the repulsion between the atoms the bonding molecular orbitals are represented as sigma pi delta whereas in case of antibonding molecular orbitals it is sigma star pi star delta star we will see how to construct the mo energy level diagram for homonuclear diatomic molecules mo energy level diagram is basically a graphical representation where the atomic orbitals in the atoms and molecular orbitals in the molecule are arranged systematically according to their relative energies or increasing energies on the left hand side we show the atomic orbitals of the first atom and on the right hand side are the atomic orbitals of the second atom the atomic orbitals are expressed in terms of the wave functions phi1 and phi2 when these two atomic orbitals combine there is formation of molecular orbitals which will be shown in the central region now the two atomic orbitals in case of homonuclear diatomic molecules will have the same energy the two atomic orbitals combine to form two molecular orbitals out of which one is the bonding molecular orbital and the other is the antibonding molecular orbital the bonding molecular orbital has a lower energy this decrease in the energy is by minus beta or minus delta this is called as the stabilization energy which is the energy evolved during the bond formation the antibonding molecular orbital shows an increase in the energy this increase is by plus beta or plus delta this is called as the destabilization energy it is the energy absorbed during the bond formation so here we have understood how to construct the uh, mo energy level diagram so we can summarize what we discussed in this video we started with the assumptions and drawbacks of the valence bond theory and these drawbacks gave rise to the new theory which is the molecular orbital theory then we discussed about the assumptions on which this molecular orbital theory is based the formation of the molecular orbitals was explained using the lcao principle the atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals so we can have the bonding and the antibonding molecular orbitals so these were discussed in detail and finally we saw how to construct the mo energy level diagram thank you for watching if you have enjoyed the video like share and subscribe my channel now in the next video we will discuss about the formation of sigma pi and delta molecular orbitals we will also discuss the non bonding molecular orbitals so we will have a glimpse of what we will be discussing in the next video so here we have the combination of the 1s atomic orbitals which results in the formation of the sigma bonding molecular orbital so see you in the next video thank you